So I ask everyone to open tonight to Proverbs chapter 6. You know, one of the greatest things that the Lord Jesus does for us when he saves us is that he sets us free from slavery to our body and its passions. And that is one of the greatest things that God does for us, is set us free from that, from the slavery to our body and its passions. And one of the things that our bodies tend to really struggle with, and if the Lord Jesus doesn't save us from it, we'll, we'll never be able to overcome it, is the subject that we're going to look at tonight. Proverbs chapter 6, beginning in verse 6. says, Go to the ant, O sluggard. The word sluggard is a Hebrew word that means lazy one. Go to the ant, O lazy one. Consider her ways and be wise. God says, all right, listen, you are a lazy human being. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go with me and observe the insect world. And in particular, please look with me at the ant. And God says, consider her ways and be wise. Learn something from the ant. Watch this, verse 7. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Now think about that, God says. Look at this little tiny insect. This insect doesn't have a coach, doesn't have a boss, doesn't have someone that's coaching or guiding this ant to make preparations for the future. But the ant, without any officer, without any chief, without any ruler, God says to human beings that struggle with laziness, take a good look at the ant, look at what the ant's doing. The ant is preparing her bread in the summer so that when harvest time comes, she gathers in all her food. Now, what does that tell you? Just that one lesson, right? What could you tell me? Just, just listening to those three verses right there, what does that tell you? What did you learn from the ant just hearing that? God says, consider her ways and be wise without having any chief officer or ruler. She prepares her bread in the summer, and then she gathers her food in the harvest. She's always on the go. Okay, yep. But what else? What else? What else could you learn from that? Initiative. Initiative. No one's coaching this ant to do it. The ant is taking initiative. The ant is taking action ahead of time. Because in the autumn, when the harvest comes in, the ant's not going to have food if right now in the summer the ant is not preparing. The lesson of the ant is this. If you want to reap when harvest time comes, you will have to take initiative and put in the necessary work ahead of time. If you want to reap then, you've got to work now. God says to all of us, and I believe this is one of the great struggles of humanity, the tendency of the body is to be lazy. And God says, no, I want you to be wise. Watch the end. Now, guys, what's the reality? The reality is for the student, what? The test is coming. If you're wise, you're going to be preparing now for what you know is coming down the road. And when that day comes, you're going to reap the benefits of it. But if unlike the ant, you're, you are not taking initiative, you're not making preparation, the day that harvest comes, you're in trouble. Uh, we know in life, for example, the rent is coming. So if that you know that's coming at the first of the month or whatever it's going to be, that means on the second week and the third week and the fourth week, you're getting ready for what you know is coming. You're not just laying around, not taking, making any preparation. 
because on the day when 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 the, the time comes you're not ready let's take it to a much bigger level judgment day is coming the Lord says is appointed to men once to die everybody knows this and after this God says will be the judgment if you belong to Christ Jesus, you are going to give an account to him by yourself. Romans 14, as we have seen. Knowing that that day is coming, are you making any preparations? Are you thinking about that now? I am preparing for that day. God says, if you and I don't live our life that way, we are not wise. Now look, God addresses the lazy people pointedly. He says in verse 9, How long will you lie there, O sluggard? How long are you going to lay, lay around? Fast forward me to Proverbs 26, verse 14. Proverbs 26, verse 14. Look what the scripture says about a sluggard, a lazy person, a lazy one. Proverbs 26, verse 14 says, As a door turns on its hinges, so does a sluggard on his bed. I mean, this is just a sad picture. You see a person that can't get themselves out of bed. And the Bible says there's a lazy person right there. God says in the, in the passage tonight, how long are you going to lie there? You know what's coming. You know what's expected. How, when are you going to get up? Verse 9, he asks again, when will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber that's dozing off, napping. A little folding of the hands to rest just a little bit more this is true of a lazy person just a, a little bit more I just need a little bit more and God says what's going to happen to you God says to the lazy man here's what's going to happen poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man in other words if you keep putting off what you need to do one day, poverty is going to sneak up on you and catch you by surprise. You're going to be shocked. How did I end up here? How did my life end up where it is? Well, you know what it is? It's like someone said, your life ended up there because of too many excuses, too many refusals, too many postponements. Another time, another day, when things are better, I'll do it. And one day, this person is going to find out he's got nothing because all the time he had, he, he slept it away. He lays it away. I want you to notice some other references in Proverbs. Look, look, look at Proverbs 13, verse 4. Proverbs 13, verse 4 says... The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. You look at two people. You got one sluggard on one side. You get a diligent one on the other side. Watch what's going to happen. The sluggard's going to end up with nothing. The diligent one's going to be rich. God says that's just the truth of life. Look at Proverbs 20, verse 4. Proverbs 20, verse 4, the sluggard does not plow in the autumn. He will seek at harvest and have nothing. He won't work. He won't put in the work that's necessary to reap a harvest, and so he's going to have, not have a harvest. Proverbs 24, verse 30, look at what this says. Actually, look at verse 13 before I read that Proverbs 20, verse 13. Proverbs 20, verse 13 says, Love not sleep, lest you come to poverty. Open your eyes and you will have plenty of bread. Get out of bed. Your life is wasting away. 
your opportunities. These things that are definitely coming, now is the time. If you want to on that day to reap a wonderful harvest, you've got to put in the work necessary right now. Look at Proverbs 24, verse 30. Proverbs 24, verse 30. I pass by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense, and behold, it was all overgrown with thorns. The ground was covered with nettles, and its stone wall was broken down. This guy walks by the farmland of a sluggard, and it looks terrible. Then I saw and considered it. I looked and received instruction. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. You know, the Bible says, he who is slack in his work, someone who is lazy in his work, is a brother to him who destroys. Those guys are brothers. They destroy the opportunity they had. They destroy the gifts that God gave them. They destroy the time they had because they're, they're lazy in their work. And God says, you see a guy like that? He destroys. And look at this guy. At one point, I'm sure this man's property was, before he took over, was a beautiful vineyard. But because of his laziness, the stone walls have now broken down. It's covered over with thorns. He destroyed the property. For one reason, he wouldn't work. He would not put in the necessary work. And how many people's lives you can really say, you know, you know your biggest problem? You're a slugger. You are lazy. You are lazy in your job. You are lazy with your family. You are lazy in the congregation that God placed you in. You are lazy with the gospel. You are lazy with your gifts. And I could walk by your life and your life could basically snap and be a picture of that guy's field. You know what these verses tell us? Laziness leads to lack. You can put it down. If you do not take initiative and you do not put in the necessary work, if you're not like an ant, when the harvest time comes, you're going to have nothing. And there was one reason why. A little sleep, a little slumber, just a little bit more, a little more folding of the hands to rest. And day by day, decision by decision, your life passed you by. Now, I'd like you all to notice in me, Proverbs gives us six characteristics of a sluggard. I want you to observe these with me and just tell me, think about with me if these are not true. Notice with me first in Proverbs 10, verse 26. One of the characteristics of a sluggard, according to Proverbs 10, verse 26, is this. They irritate those who depend on him. A sluggard irritates the people who depend on him. Notice Proverbs 10, verse 26. Like vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is the slugger to those who send him. They gave this guy a responsibility, and he irritates them. He is like smoke in their eyes. The Bible says that's one of the characteristics of a slugger. They irritate people who depend on them. Because they're lazy, they don't take initiative. And the people who depend on them get irritated. Second characteristic of a sluggard, according to Proverbs, notice in me in Proverbs 15, verse 19. A sluggard makes things difficult for himself. A sluggard irritates those who depend on him, number one. And number two, a sluggard makes things difficult for himself. Look at Proverbs 15, verse 19. The way of a sluggard is like a hedge of thorns. 
but the path of the upright is a level highway. It's a smooth road. And by the way, notice Proverbs. I've told you guys in the past that Proverbs is a Hebrew poetry, which means it's the, the key characteristic of Hebrew poetry is not rhyme, but parallelism. In other words, the first line says something, and the second line is a parallel. Notice the parallel. The way of a sluggard is like a hedge of thorns, but what's the contrast? The upright. So God compares a righteous man and a sluggard. In other words, a sluggard is not righteous. And he says, the way of a sluggard is like the hedge of the thorns, but the path of the upright is a smooth path. It's a level highway. You notice a person that is lazy. They're only making things difficult for themselves. These guys never take initiative. They never put in the necessary work. And then all of a sudden, the day before something has to happen, they're aggravated. Their family's all upset. The place is in a chaos. And they made it hard for themselves. Why? Because they sat around week after week and day after day. And they made it hard for themselves. You did it to yourself. Notice Ecclesiastes 30, verse 18. Excuse me, verse chapter 10, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, right after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 18. Notice what it says in Ecclesiastes 10, verse 18. Through sloth, the roof sinks in, and through indolence, the house leaks. You see, guys, house is falling apart. How did that happen? You had someone who was lazy, who wasn't taking, wasn't looking ahead, who wasn't noticing, wait a minute, we might have an issue, taking the initiative to prepare that one day the, leaf, the roof might sink in. The guy who always wants what's easy, never wants to do what's hard, wants to, doesn't want to get off the couch. One day that guy's roof is going to sink in. And life is going to be a lot harder than it would have been for you to get off the couch. But you made things difficult for yourself. That's one of the characteristics of a sluggard. They irritate those who depend on them, and they make life difficult for themselves. Notice thirdly, according to Proverbs 21, verse 25, turn here with me. Proverbs 21, verse 25. Notice the scripture says, the desire of the sluggard kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. Here's the third characteristic of a sluggard. He refuses to put in the work that is necessary to get what he desires. He refuses to put in the work that is necessary to get what he desires. He desires it but he won't put in the work. And the desire, Proverbs says, kills him. It's killing him. Okay, okay, man. You see that thing you desire? Take initiative. Put in the work. Be like an ant. You want to have an awesome autumn? You want to have a great fall with a great harvest? Get to work in the summer. But the Bible says a sluggard, according to Proverbs 21, 25, refuses to put in the work that is necessary to get what he desires. Notice the fourth characteristic of a sluggard in Proverbs 22, verse 13. Proverbs 22, verse 13 says, The sluggard says, quote, There is a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets, unquote. You know what that tells you? Here's the fourth characteristic of a sluggard. A sluggard always comes up with excuses to not do what he should be doing. Oh, it's too cold. It's too hot. It's too rainy. It's too late. It's too this. It's too that. It always is, right? It always is. It's never ideal. When is it ever going to be the ideal time Ah, to do what I ought to do, to really take initiative, to really put in the work. It's never going to be ideal. But the sluggard, he'll always have an excuse. 
Uh, it may be too dangerous to do it today. A sluggard irritates those who depend on him. He makes things difficult for himself. He refuses to put in the work that is necessary to get what he desires. Always comes up with excuses to not do what he should be doing. Number five, notice Proverbs 26, verse 15. Proverbs 26, verse 15. The sluggard buries his hand in the dish. It wears him out to bring it back to his mouth. I mean, this guy is lazy. What does this tell you about a sluggard? Number five, he doesn't finish what he starts. This is a characteristic of a lazy person. All right. <laughs> Man, I am hungry. I am hungry. Dude, take it out of your hand and do the work to put it in your mouth. Here's the characteristic of a slugger. They never, they never finish what they start. Now, guys, does this sound true to you? A sluggard irritates those who depend on him, makes things difficult for himself, Refuses to put in the work that is necessary to get what he desires. Always comes up with excuses to not do what he should be doing. Number five, he does not finish what he starts. And then I'll show you one more that Proverbs says about a slugger. Look at Proverbs, next, very next verse, chapter 26, verse 16. It says, the sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. They, act, they can actually evaluate things. They can discern things. This tells you this. The sixth characteristic of a sluggard is this. He thinks he knows better than everyone else. And while he is sitting there, laying around, and summer is passing by, and his life is passing him by, and the opportunities are passing him by, he knows better than everybody. And he's irritating the people that depend on him. He's making things difficult for himself. He is refusing to put in the work that's necessary to get what he desires. He is always coming up with excuses to not do what he should be doing. He's not finishing what he starts. But in spite of all those things, he knows better than everybody. Go with me to Proverbs 30. Verse 24. Proverbs 30, verse 24. God says, Four things on earth are small, but they are exceedingly wise. And what's the first one? The ants. Are a people not strong, yet they provide their food in the summer. You know, it's awesome. God's like a parent. It's like saying, okay, listen, guys, let's go on a hike today. Let's go out on the nature trail, and we're going to observe things in nature that I'm going to teach you. All right, kids, come around. Everybody, you're ready to see these ants? Look at them. Look at them. Now, guys, if anybody can have an excuse, how about an ant? Not very big. And how is it that those ants, you ever, you ever watch those documentaries on ants, how these guys work together as an army? It's amazing what they can do but what is it it's they're working they're taking initiative god says listen you you lazy human being i want you to wake up to see yourself i'm trying to tell you by the way whenever god rebukes it's for the purpose of correcting that you can change if the fact of the matter is your issue is that you're a sluggard and that is and how do you know it you're irritating the people that depend on you you don't finish what you start. You always make excuses for what you should be doing. You're making things difficult for yourself. You're refusing to put in the work that is necessary to get what you desire. Then God's saying to you, my son, my daughter, I have something to tell you. I'm going to give you a good diagnosis tonight. You're a sluggard, but I can help you. I can help you. I want you to look at the ants they are incredibly wise. 
And why is it again? Because they provide their food in the summer, although they are not strong. Oh God, you know, I really like to do this, but you know, I just, I'm just too weak. I'm just too small. I'm just too tired. It's just too hot. It's just too cold. It's just too windy. It's just too rainy. It's just too... God says, look at the end. Anything else? By the way, you know what's especially sinful, guys, according to the New Testament, is when we are lazy about the Lord's business. The Bible says, remember Romans 12, verse 11, do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. If you remember that, we looked at that verse, the theme of that verse is serve the Lord with all your heart. Put everything into it. This is why I say right now, we just got done with Romans 15 and 16. We have got to think about as a congregation, what is every gift that we have in here? What is every opportunity that we have? And are we going to be like ants preparing for a judgment day? Or are we just going to sit here and say, well, one day when it gets, the weather gets a little better and I get a little more, whatever it is. And, and meanwhile, and we know it's a shame, guys. I mentioned this way back then, you know, when we look at Romans 12, verse 11, there are lots of people, I wonder if they ever did their best at anything. It's always 60%, 70%. Because it's, it's hard to get yourself to really give maximum effort. God says, that's the only way to serve me. Jesus told a great story about this. Turn with me to Matthew 25. And Jesus warns about this. Matthew 25, verse 14 says, About the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He had received the five talents, went at once. He took initiative. Look at this. The guy says, God, you gave me, or the Lord in this story, Master, you've given me five things. I'm going to go put them to work. He trades with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he had received the one talent, went and dug in the ground, and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Now remember, Jesus is telling a story on purpose. A parable is a story with a lesson. And he says, this is what the king of heaven is like. It's like a man who disperses to his servants different abilities, and one day he's going to come back and call them to account. Now verse 20, he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. I just want to pause and notice one thing. Jesus says that this is the kingdom of heaven. So this does seem to indicate that one day in heaven, those who have been faithful servants are going to be given greater responsibility in the eternal kingdom. We don't know anything more than that except that. Verse 22, he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So this, this guy knows his master is a hard worker. This guy brings forth a prophet. He knows this about his master. 
But he says about himself, verse 25, I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, here, here here's what yours. And what does his master say to him, verse 26? You wicked and what? Slothful. Slothful servant. This is what Proverbs is talking about tonight. You lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will more be given and he will have an abundance, but from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That tells me this person is not a child of God. Thankfully, Christ Jesus saves us from laziness. He saves us from being ruled by our body. That's why Romans 6 verse 3 says, Do you not know that all of you have been baptized into Christ Jesus or baptized into his death? You were baptized with, with him in death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so you too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united, remember way back when we talked about that passage, that word means fused with him. If you have been united with him in a death like his, you will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. For he who has died, set, for he who has died, sin no longer has dominion over him. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Now guys, I believe it is a naturally sinful tendency of our bodies to be lazy. To not want to put in the work necessary to get what we desire. To not finish what we start. To always make excuses for not doing what we should be doing. This is a sinful tendency of our body. But the Lord Jesus saves us from the rulership of our body. The Bible says, how does he do it? By the power of his spirit. The scripture says, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. That's why the Apostle Paul said, you know, I, I discipline my body and I make it my slave. Last after I, I preach to other people, I myself am disqualified. The Bible says those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. There is good news for sluggards tonight. You know what the good news is? Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus took your sluggardly self and crucified it, buried it, and when he raised, you raised with him. Now, what do you need to do? Tonight, when you hear the word, God is giving you grace. He is, he is confronting you. He is pouring strength into you, and he's calling you to go to the ant, watch the ant, and be wise just like that. Get out of your bed. And start finishing what you start. Quit making excuses for what, for not doing what you should be doing. Put in the work necessary to get what you desire. Don't think you know better than everybody else. <clears throat> Quit making things difficult for yourself and irritating the people that depend on you. If you don't, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding the hands to rest, and your poverty is going to come upon you like, like a robber. One day when you've got nothing to show and the thing that caught up to you was your laziness, that's what caught up to you. Laziness leads to lack. 
but the Lord Jesus leads to life. Thankfully, because of the Lord Jesus, I can hear this word tonight, and if my problem or any one of our problem has been this sin, because the Lord Jesus crucified it and I resurrected with him, I have the freedom now to walk away from my old master, the master of laziness, of being a sluggard. I can now yield to God's spirit and say, Lord, I want to, I'm going to get up and I'm going to start to follow you and you're going to, I'm going to need your strength. I'm going to depend on you. But when that battle comes tomorrow morning or whatever it's going to be, and the body is calling out to me and you're calling out to me, I'm going to yield to your spirit. I need your strength, Lord. Let's pray. Lord, help us to take to heart what you have taught us this evening. Lord, if we have been sluggards, we confess, I pray that we would from the heart confess and repent of this sin. Lord, that we would listen to when you tell us the kingdom parable, that we are to take initiative and be diligent with it, what you've given to us, Lord. The time, the opportunity, this church, our gifts, Lord, help this congregation not to show up one day at Judgment Day with little to show because it was too cold, too hot, too rainy, too much going on, too this, too that. Help us to consider the ant and be wise. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that by your strength and the gift of your spirit, we can ride the wave of grace into industry and hard work and away from laziness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.